for eternity on the foundation of Christ. I think it means being prepared to give his service priority over other things. Uh, always remembering that caring for the family is part of that service because they are the ones that God has given you. One great benefit of being a 24-7 disciple is that it's a two-way thing. Um, you seek to serve the Lord 24-7, but he's there for you 24-7 as well. I do believe that um, every day is part of your Christian life. Um, you know, it's not just Sundays, it's, uh, you know, it's every day. You, you're meant to be living your life actually being an asset to um, the church and God, if you see what I mean. Being available, that's, that's what being 24-7 Christian is all about. Yeah, I heard a phrase a few years ago that's really stuck with me, is that um, God has given you every, the right amount of time to do everything that he wants you to do with that day. So to give the right amount of time for people, for jobs, for spending time with him, for relaxing, for having fun with our families. And I think that being a 24-7 disciple is about being so in step with the spirit that our days are really well balanced and contain everything that they should. Soon after we were married, Jill and I made a conscious decision, having been challenged by a book, to manage our money affairs so that a proper proportion was uh, given to the Lord's service uh, and, and we felt that we were living in faith because when we had a major decision to make we prayed about it and we looked for the answer and, and then ten years ago we were both of us violently challenged over this because we were privileged to have six weeks on board the Operation Mobilization ship, the Duros. And all the folk on that ship, 450-odd, are volunteers. We met people on there, married couples with children who'd sold their homes in their own ho country to serve on that ship. Now, that's living in faith. And it challenged us because we realized we weren't really living in faith. Yes, to a degree, but not in a truly dedicated way like the folk on that ship were. Of course in the past 10 years I've been both at work and now retired. When I was at work I had people to witness to but they knew I was a Christian um, they didn't involve me in everything. I did gain an awful lot of respect I think and I, that grew, I think I grew as a Christian in that time in retirement I've had less people to in my life so it's not so easy and I've had to learn somehow to try and bring people into it but I, I'm still doing that at the moment. I still think I've grown spiritually over the time because I've done things uh, church wise so therefore have grown but sometimes I look back on it and I think how much have I grown <laughs> so it's not as easy as all that it's a hard situation to analyse. Mm. I became a Christian when I was um, kind of mid-teens and I, I was really quite black and white. So I felt that being a Christian was about ticking boxes on a daily basis. So you had to have like a half an hour um, to an hour quiet time every day. You had to make sure that you never said a swear word and kind of all these tick boxes that you had to do to make sure that you were a Christian. Over the last 10 years, I think I've been a lot more patient with myself um, because I've recognized that God is full of grace and full of patience and full of love for me. So I think um, I've become more gentle with myself because I realise that that's how God is for us. He's not about ticking those boxes um, and about kind of marking us down every time we do something wrong. I think the most important thing would be that um, I do want to get closer to God. I do want um, him to affect my life more. Um, but that means me asking and being available to him, I think, more. Um, and I think one of the, my problems is that I need to be getting involved more in the right things. So you have to choose the right thing, you, which God wants you to do. You know, you don't just rush in and do it because you might be doing someone else's job. We're getting older and there's younger people coming on through. 
we've got to somehow encourage them rather than necessarily do it ourselves. Um, it's kind of the flip opposite of what's happened in the last 10 years, maybe. Uh, whereas I, I think I needed to break down my habits from the last 10 years, I've now, I think, got to kind of rebuild them, but as a response to God rather than trying to gain his approval. I would like to keep working at a, an even deeper awareness of the holiness of God. This has sprung out of our uh, commitment to read the Bible in a year. We've been going through Leviticus and Numbers and over and over and over again God is demonstrating his people how separate he is from them and yet how much he wants them to be close to him and, and this is something that is needful in my life to be aware more and more of God's holiness. In that way I shall be more aware of my lack of holiness and hopefully more on the Spirit to help me become more like Jesus.